Hello, everybody. This is Michelangelo Badio, and I just want to say I'm happy to be back this week. We are, uh, I'm just, I got online a few seconds early just to make sure everybody was here. Okay, I see Austin online. That's cool. We're getting numbers now. I see Jenny online. Great. I feel like, and I see you, and I see you, and I see you, and you, and you. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to wait a little bit to, to the numbers get up, and then I will start my speech and my lesson for today. Now, today's lesson, I have a lot of content already posted. If you want to see some of the uh, Facebook Live uh, things that I've done in the past, and even some of the master classes that I've done this year, go to my YouTube page, Michelangelo Badia, just Type it in, all the stuff will come out. There is so much content. Last week I talked about jazz progressions. And we... Now I'm using a really great acoustic guitar today. But what I'm saying about the jazz progressions, we posted four of the 25 progressions, or I'm sorry, 24 on this one, uh, online free for you. So I have a lot of content that can help you. Now today's guitar lesson, I realize, I mean, I'm averaging like seven, eight hundred thousand questions and comments, you know, per show. And I can't possibly answer it. And I try to move back and forth. The, it's the double guitar in me. The left handed side wants to keep talking, but the right handed side says, answer the questions, read what people are saying. So I'm like, constantly. And so what I wanted to do today is I wanted to, uh, I posted about, let's see who else is there. Diana's there. Uh, Cynthia. Uh, I see Alexis. She's there. Uh, let's see. Tanya. She's there. Who else? David. Uh, there's so many people that are coming online now. Today. Now, on this particular lesson, what I want to focus on is your questions. Now, what I'm playing today are some really cool guitars. This is a sawtooth. We call it a parlor guitar. It's really tiny. Now, I'm a big guy. You know, I'm over six feet tall. Uh, for you that are not in the United States, 185 centimeters. So, I'm tall. But I love these guitars. Now, I'm running it through a preamp today. I wanted to try something different. You know, I've got a lot of equipment in my studio, a lot of hardware. And, and so what I wanted to do is I wanted to run it through one of my pieces of gear that I used to use for overdrive sounds, but we've got a little chorus, a slight bit of delay, but... Love this guitar. It is really small. It's called a parlor guitar. And I'm going to, before we talk about all the questions and get Joey involved. See, Joey wants to talk. See, he's sitting there going, come on, come on, come on. I'm, I, you, know, you know, I'm always willing to lend a hand. I'm always willing to lend a hand here. Come on, Michael. Shut up. Let me talk. So anyway, um, what I want to say is this. And, and I can say this unequivocally. Uh, people that know me, know my career, know I have a whole heck of a lot of guitars. We're approaching over 170 now. Yes. I want more. Always more. You know, two months from now, I'm approaching 187.5. Where's the point five? Well, I bought a broken one. We're working on it. And so, but the point is this. Sawtooth makes the absolute best acoustic guitars I have been with two major brands in my career. Well, when, when you count Wayne Charvel, Charvel kind of moved around. You know, this is back in the 80s. He was with Gibson. He was with BC Rich. Then he started his own company, Ritz. But it was really primarily Wayne, Wayne Charvel. And so I went with Wayne, and then I couldn't do that anymore. But I went with Washburn, and then went, went with another company after that. And... I have acoustic guitars from both of those companies in my collection. Some of them are over 25 years old with Stevens cutaways. You know, we're talking Nuno Betancourt style stuff. They don't 
even come close to the sawtooth acoustic. This is a really thin uh, parlor guitar. It's it's super small, but it's so rich and sound great. the sound of these guitars. You know, when I play the No Boundaries rhythm track. so great this is the smallest guitar you can get in the sawtooth line and it is bigger sounding than virtually any guitar from the other two companies that I endorsed for many years that's why I love sawtooth guitar so much now let's get to the lesson here I wanted to get your questions your questions here so now I have a friend here named Joey Hello. Hello, Michael. How are you? I'm doing good, Joey. So let's read some of this stuff off. Okay, here we go. Now, this is the first question. We received hundreds of questions between Facebook, Instagram. Here's one of them. We want to start, and I want to answer your questions here. Okay, are you ready? Yes. I'm always willing to lend a hand. Okay, we know this. I play guitar from years. Now, we have to read this. And I've made a lot of improvements. The problem is that even if my picking and speed is good, I always touch other strings. How do you solve this? Now, it's a good question. Okay, so what happens? When somebody plays and they start making a mistake, so what happens? Why do you do that? Okay, it's there's sometimes physical limitations that that a human experiences but see i'm going to defer to something and this is not a cheap shot out metalmethod.com when i talk here you know i'm talking a lot you know i've got you know humor involved in this uh you know it's entertainment and it's also a lesson all mixed in one it's everything it's what i do in concert it's what i do in workshops that you know i make in like important concepts and, and detailed concepts, very simple for you. But when I do the metal method programs, we are doing fantastic. I've known Doug Marks from Metal Method for many, many years. Uh, we're super close friends. He has taught more people how to play guitar pretty much than anybody besides, if anyone's older, Mel B. Now, Doug is the literal founder he is the one that did the first instructional videos now think about that like there's somebody out there that actually started this it was doug marks of metal method and this is why i love the guy so much but here's the thing about our metal method programs the video production is first class so you're not going to hear me talking about you know joey's not on screen he wanted to be but he's not and, and so i really do concise, detailed programs and outline concepts that are very advanced in a very simple and informative and easy to understand way. So when somebody says, okay, I'm up to a certain speed, but then I, I can't progress any farther or I'm getting uh, string noise because, you know, my, my hand's just not uh, really dialing in and, and being accurate when I play super fast. I've already outlined this. Go to youtube.com. Go to my YouTube page. I talk about how to play better, how to uh, being fast. 
And what I talked about is two concepts. One, you work very meticulously and fastidiously. I love that with Freddie Mercury. So fastidious, so precise, it's a killer. I love that word, oh, fastidious. It's like, don't you know, I am, I'm the Cavendish. My name is, my name is Ty Cavendish. And don't you know who I am? I'm so fastidious, so meticulous. And so I think of those two words, it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> and so here's what I can say about being fastidious. Uh, when you practice, you practice two ways. You attack speed from slow to fast and fast to slow. So what did I mean by that? When you play, you play exercises to develop technique, to, to um, here's how Tom Morello said it, when I, when I was his guitar teacher, and, and it's documented and verified through Guitar World that I was Tom Morello's teacher. And, and uh, it's a great story, too, because he actually had another teacher uh, when he was uh, taking guitar lessons, and I had a break at that time, he told me, and he hears... And he hears all this riffing, he's like... I want to play like that guy. <laughs> and so then he, what he did is he switched teachers and the other teacher was kind of mad. But I was like, hey, I didn't even know at the time the other teacher was mad at me. I just had a new student named Tom. I did not know. He was not famous and it was no big deal to me. I just wanted to help. But anyway, Tom said he had speeditis. And basically it's the same as the question that, that he couldn't coordinate and he couldn't uh, calibrate both hands to work together. So what you do is you outline exercises. I'm just telling you right now, speed kills works. Get speed kills. It is starting, you know, I, I've said this a thousand times and it can be said a thousand times more and people will still ask the same question. You have to go over it over and over. My lessons start like an alphabet, the letter A. See, a lot of teachers, uh, they, they don't have the background I have. They don't have the, the theory background. They don't have the traveling background. They don't have the degree from not only Northeastern University, but rock and roll university. I know what it's like to release records on major labels. So I come from a place that's very different than a lot of other guitar teachers. And look at it, I think teaching is the most noble profession you can have. But a lot of times teachers are jaded. A lot of times they want to steer you in the direction of what they think is cool and what they think is good. And they want to steer you, you know, it's like, it's like Beavis and Butthead. Winger sucks, metallic rules, bro. Well, guess what? Kip Winger is a genius. The guy is a phenomenal sing singer. In the 90s and the late 80s, two cartoon characters ruined a band's career. Talk about a cancel culture. They canceled Winger. It's like, here's Kip Winger, brilliant player, brilliant writer, brilliant singer, and he looked cool. And they're like, well, hey, bro, like, we are socks. Do you like Metallic, bro? I'm like, are you guys out of your mind? Are you freaking out of your mind? But that's our society. So here's what I'm saying about speed. Speed kills works. You start at the letter A. Don't start at G. Don't start at K. Don't start beyond the beginning. You know, you don't build a house on the roof down. You build a house on the foundation up. That's the way I teach. I teach from the absolute bottom up. I am living proof. Look at me. Do I look all wrinkly to you? No! I'm older now. I have been touring for 30 years. 58 countries. I take care of myself. Not a big drinker. I don't do drugs. I practice and I practice what I preach. That's the difference. When I say something, it comes from experience. It comes from a lifetime of education, not only in the educational realm. It's like, you know, a lot of times teachers are teachers, but that's it. They teach. See, and there's nothing wrong with that. I am not discounting that. I am a teacher that has world experience. You want to know what it's like to be in the center stone of Stonehenge? I can tell you. Do you know what it's like to climb the pyramid of the sun and the moon in Mexico? I can tell you. Do you know what it's like to visit the Roman baths in England? I can tell you. 
I can tell you what it's like to be in China 15 times and see the Great Wall and climb the Hero's Wall. And this is why it's so important. See, these guitar lessons are not just guitar, they are life lessons for you to be better. I am living proof. You wanna know how you can develop strength, and this is why I say about speed. Now, it's a long, convoluted thing, but if you want concise details, get my Metal Method programs, metalmethod.com. Make a fist. Just go like this. Take this hand and go, ah, like that. Power, baby, power. See, I can make hard fists in both hands. If I had hand problems, if I couldn't do this, watch this. Every finger can do that. You wanna know what else it can do? This. Look at that, look at that. Just to go like that. And so when you can do things like this, you have power over your hands. When, what did I talk about with speed? Attack it from this. Exercises, then attack it with reckless abandon. Wow! Don't even worry about what it, what, when you're playing clean, feel the need for speed. And so attack it from both sides. And I have a detailed Facebook live chat on this. And uh, I wanted to talk about this because in the beginning of this lesson, I wanna talk a little bit about life lessons because again, if you want the details, the absolute utter details, you can go there. If you want a gap to get the best guitars on the market for a price range you can afford, Sawtooth Guitars. I'm the voice of experience. I did a big tour earlier this year with Sawtooth Guitars. They are the best out there. When you're talking about a $400 plus dollar guitar with a top of the line German made Floyd Rose, which is that guitar and the white right there, that's one of my brand new signature models. And it's so cool, I had my former company copy it. They copied my white one and black one because they know it's cool. And I know it's cool, and you know it's cool. Now, so that's question one. Now, Joey, let's uh, talk about this. Remember, to work on speed, attack it from both sides. Slow to fast, reckless abandon fast to slow. And then all of a sudden, because you need that reckless abandon, because you need to feel what it's like to play really fast. Even, it's kind of like being able to crash and burn in a car. It's like Groundhog Day with Bill Murray, or what is that, uh, the movie with Tom Cruise? I can't remember the name, but it was really amazing. It's like he was a military guy that, that you know, our Earth is being taken over by aliens, and he killed an alien and absorbed this power. And the power was that he was being killed every day because, and repeating the day. And so, and what does that mean that you can learn? You can, I mean, can you imagine just having the same day over and over and over for eternity? The, the amount of knowledge you could, you could encompass, the amount of knowledge you could get, I mean, it's incredible. And so this is what I'm saying. I have talked about these things before. Speed is an accumulation of knowledge and of technique. Slow to fast, fast to slow. Now, Joey, are ready? Okay, I'm ready. I just wanna say, hi, Mike. Are you talking to me? I'm you, bro. Okay, this is the lesson. This is what the guy said. Okay. Hi, Mike. Thanks for all the great lessons over the years. You're welcome. You mentioned setting up a Floyd Rose a certain way, and that may come on a video. Any chance that that's going to come up soon? Thank you. Do you really mean thank you? No, because I don't like you anymore because you won't give me time to talk. Shut up, Joey. Okay, so, I mean, it's pretty weird to have a hand that talks to you. Hello. And so, and I told you how I got it. It was from clinics. It's like, nobody would ask questions. So I was like, okay, if you're not going to qu ask questions, what can I do? Sit around, hello, Michael. Yes, I'm, I'm Toby Pendergast from the Pendergast. Yes, yeah, so we live in Massachusetts. And uh, so I'd like to ask you a question. You know, do, do you find like a $10,000 guitar is like too cheap for my, my financial requirements? Shut up! You can buy a $150 guitar. So anyway, Toby, stay in your mansion. Chill. Okay, now. What I want to say is this, regarding this question. I am posting, I 
recorded a lot of content, a lot of content. And, and uh, one of the things is my workaround for a Floyd Rose. I have played thousands of clinics, thousands of music stores around the planet. Think about this, 58 countries. You know how many times I've been to Switzerland alone? So many, I can't remember. Do you know how many times I've been to Italy? 40? How many times I've been to England and all of the UK? I was only in Ireland once. I've been in Scotland only twice. I was in Wales once, but I was in England, I can't even remember, 30 times, 35 times. I have seen more of a lot of countries that you come from than you have seen. And, and I'm from Chicago. I didn't even look, I didn't even know my hometown until I moved to LA. I've been to every state of the United States. But this is a thing that I've learned. A lot of, quote, setup guys, they set up a guitar on a bench like this, right? Okay, so then they tune up the Floyd Rose and they lock it up like, okay, it's locked. I put it on my shoulder because I always stand up when I play live or do a workshop. Now, I'm sitting down now because it's a Facebook chat, but I always, and I want to be more consistent with the camera. But when I play, I always stand up. And you know what happens? It's always flat, always. So you know what I did? I started bringing a tool, a Phillips screwdriver. And what I would do is I'd go to the back of the guitars and I'd do like a quarter turn tweak. And what I would see, because the problem with a Floyd Rose is once you lock it up, the tremolo floats. And now all the purists think, oh, oh yes, it must be parallel. It, it, it absolutely must be parallel to the guitar. And so that's wrong. It's absolutely wrong because guitars are kind of like, you can think I'm weird, but I have 170 plus. They're like little humans. Like they're like little beings. They want to, to there certain guitars like to be in a certain place. See, see, even though I have a degree, even though I'm very technical, I have a feel. I have a feeling for things. And so when I look at a guitar and I play it and I feel it, and I see that the bar doesn't really want to rest like this, I have no problem tweaking it. And all the all the guitar tech purists are going, you've ruined my setup! Whoa! This sucks! How dare you do this? I'm like, dude, do that. Have you ever flown halfway around the world, gotten off an airplane, had no time to sleep, no time to even take a shower, picked up a guitar that's totally whacked with a locking tremolo, and you set it up? Have you ever done that? I've done it a hundred plus times. Okay, so I've done things that most of you can never even possibly think that can happen with a Floyd. I've seen every scenario can possibly happen, ha have. And so here's what I did. I have the Mikey Angelo Badia workaround and the workaround works big time. And so what I do is I don't worry about if the spring, now granted, you don't want a Floyd that's like this or like that. You know, it's like Joey like that, I like that. But when you have a Floyd that's not parallel to the body of the guitar, so what? Who cares? Only the purists care. Only the, the people that are like so exalted, like, hey, in my opinion is the absolute truth. No, it's not. Like, because, you know, a lot of times online, I read so many inaccuracies. And, and like in my own pages, I can't deal with it. I just can't. I, 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 you know, I'm a nice person. I never flame anybody else. But when somebody comes and prognosticates and, and says something that I know from based on my vast experience of performing and playing in guitars that I know is wrong, I don't even want to answer it because I know these people will not listen to me. It's kind of like politics, you know. Okay, this is not really a hand. Like, oh, it's a hand, but no. Only Joey. It's like if Joey wants to argue with me, okay, I don't want to argue. Um, when I know I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I don't know about everything. If you want to ask me about abstract existentialism, uh, I'm not the master at that. But you want to ask me about music, about performing, about touring, I have toured more than about 99% of the bands on planet Earth. And, and, uh, and, and I've done it in a way that's my own way. But what I found out with Floyd's, 
you have to be able to adjust the tremolo by the springs. We are doing a whole detailed program on this that's going to be coming out of my YouTube channel. I'm going to highly suggest go to my YouTube channel, go to metalmethod.com. Um, you can get my lessons in really incredible detail, credible video production, and go to YouTube to find about all these nuances that I'm talking about. Okay, so I'm releasing an instructional uh, program about how I tweak Floyd's. I'm going to tell you this. It works big time. It works based on Mikey's experience. This is the world according to Mikey, and the world according to Mikey is pretty crazy. And I, I've, I'm going to say this right now. I have lived 10 lifetimes, 10. I go for it. I absolutely go for it. If there's something, and, and I'm not afraid of change. Do I like change all the time? No, but we are in a pandemic right now. I have had two plus two is metal four, minus one is metal three. I have had three USA tours cancel this year. I'm not playing any more USA shows because of the COVID virus that basically 99.999% of the people on planet Earth will never be affected by. But I'm affected by it, and so are a lot of other people because of our job. And so, am I mad about it? Well, kind of. But am I doing something about it? Yes. I'm being proactive. I'm learning new things on guitar. I'm doing, I'm utilizing that time to be, to make Mikey the best Mikey can be. Now, I want to, uh, here's another question that we have. Joey, are you ready? Yes, I've been ready. I'm waiting to talk. I'm the rock star here, not you, M.A.B. This is J.A.B., Joey Angelo Badio. I'm always here to lend a hand to you. No, you're not. You're not always my biggest friend. Sometimes. Okay, read it. Okay, I didn't say, you didn't say read it. I'm supposed to say to read it. No, I meant I want to read it. Okay. How do you stay focused? on creating new material when nearly every riff and every note has been played throughout the years. Where is your mind coming up with new ideas? And then they wrote, I said that, not you. Shut up. Okay, I'll let you talk. Keep up the great work that you do. Hope all is well. Greetings from Ireland, pal. Pal sounds USA. Now, this is a pretty interesting question. This is pretty deep. I'm going to tell you this. When I studied music in school, in the 1700s, in Mozart and Haydn's day, over 10,000 symphonies have been written. Now, if anything knows, if anybody knows anything about a symphony, it's a long piece of music. <laughs> okay, you know, there's the, you know, the exposition, you know, sonata form, the, the development section, the recapitulation. You know, I mean, there's so many things involved in writing a symphony. And there are, are, are like guidelines that you use. And of course, people broke those rules. That's what rules are made to be. But did you know what they were saying in the 1700s? That the prognosticators, the, the, the news pundits were saying this. Everything that can be done with a scale or a mode has already been done. Almost 300 years ago. They're saying this. See, this is what this person is saying. How do you come up with new things? How is this youngest generation of guitarists some of the best guitarists that have ever lived? How is that possible? See, this is why closed minds think small thoughts. I'm an open mind. I'm an open mind. I'm a sieve. I, 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 not only do I let things flow through, but I also want things to come into my head. I'm always a student, always, even with these. Do you know how much competition there is online right now? I mean, everybody and their brother and sister wants to do a Facebook show or an Instagram show or a Twitch show. Uh, I have based my whole career on just helping people. And you know what? It's helped me back because it's made me a better artist. I'm here today after many years. Um, you know how many of my contemporaries can't play nearly at the speed that I can play, can't play nearly, uh, and they don't have the technique that I have because I practice what I preach. I'm always a student, I'm always learning new things. That's the world according to Mikey. No one is so good, not even me. I'm not so great 
even though you know I'm on a million lists, and even though I see like magazines like Guitar World and all that, it, it's so weird right now because they, you know, they don't, you know, I, I'm just, I love Jimi Hendrix, I love Eric Clapton, I love Brian May, and, and I understand all this, but there's a lot of new things going on. And also, the thing that made guitar a hard sell to a lot of younger people is because of magazines, I hate to say this, like Guitar World, because you can't keep putting the same people on the cover and you can't keep ignoring people like me who have actually made a huge difference and are still there kicking butt. And that's why um, I've made a whole career based out of, I've been signed twice to two major labels. I've had my own successful label over 20 years. I work with labels like Rat Pack Records. I'm really knowledgeable about the record industry, really, and I've had a lot of success. And so, and all I can tell you is this, that what I do and what I, what I play, how I think is based on I try to be as smart as I can. Now everybody, you know, nobody's perfect. We all make mistakes. We all like get really mad, like, ah! You know, and, uh, but you know, I have to admit, you know, I was really mad when the owner of my former company passed away. You know, not mad at him because, but mad, it's like, dude, you were the healthiest guy I know. You were the, one of the smartest people I ever knew. You were my friend. You know, you were, you were a brilliant person and, and, and you're not there. And the people that took over from my former company suck. They absolutely suck. And, and, and they're nuts. They're, they're, you know, it's like, what happened? And, and it led me to believe something that I've always believed. In life, it's not, you know, it's just business. It's the people. You surround yourself with the best people. You surround yourself with the best things that you can do. And so when I talk about all these things, the details are in my instructional programs and on my YouTube page. The overview of the world according to Mike is here because I wanna help you. We are in a crazy time. A lot of people have been affected, not just me. A lot of people have been adversely affected. Some people have not. I've been very fortunate. But I'm gonna tell you something about focusing on creating new material. Because I went to school and have a degree in music, it doesn't make me better or smarter than you, but I learned that a bunch of pundits, it's like news channels, they criticize everything if they don't like it, if they like it, they think it's wonderful. They come and go. Nobody remembers the news. They remember the people who created the things that count in, in a person's life. And so I learned many, many years ago that People thought you couldn't do anything new 300 years ago. Always something new. You want to know how I never get writer's block. I studied writer's block. Get inspiration. Listen to new music. Use drum programs. Do things that can help you be inspired. See, one of the things that separates a great songwriter from a mediocre one it's just the beat. I'm going to give you a perfect example of a great groove. That groove is so bad. It's like bow down, bow to bow to down to down 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 down. So most amateur songwriters. I love you, you've hurt me so bad. My cat died today, and my dog is dying So It's like, shut up! We all have that stuff happen! My dog is supposed to die. He was my best friend. Okay, we know, we all had dogs, we all had cats, you know, but it takes something. He's talking about stalking you. Every breath you take. No, 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 no. I mean, okay, I'm going to write a song about stalking you but I'm gonna make it a number one hit single. That's bad, dude! I mean, and it's really. That 
that's a one, six, two, five progression. I've just seen a face I can't forget. I'm a place where we just met you. Just a girl for me. I'm on the world to see we met. Da, 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 da. Or how about this one, six, two, five? three chord in there. Why? Because I can. But the point is this. It's unlimited. See, we have a certain number of tones, but those tones can be arranged in a multiple, in, in, in an uncalculable amount of ways. And so when you think you've hit the plateau that I can't do anything new, <laughs> I want to, I want to create the lost chord. Okay, wait. Well, it's lost, because no one wanted to find it! Okay, well, how about... That's pretty ugly, too. How about this? Oh, I like that. Why? Why not? Well, how about this? An augmented 11. Thumb wrapped around the finger! Oh, that's pretty ugly, man. That's like really ugly. That's like butt ugly, bro. Resolving to. So, the moral of this, this is really important. This is life, it's not just music. It's unlimited. Just because someone invented a car, that doesn't mean you can't invent a new car. Just because someone invented the telephone, Steve Jobs said, I can make an iPhone. Just because someone invented a record player, Steve Jobs again said, I can make an iPod. And so my mind is open. Open your mind. Don't limit yourself if you're stuck. You know, a lot of people say use a metronome. That's great. I'd rather use drum program. drum programs, when you just use simple drum software, it gives you ideas that you would never have before. Just set up a drum loop. Just set up something. Like, I, I have a song on my new record called Badlands, and now I use a lot of seven strings, and we're going to talk about that next one. <laughs> And so what I did was, I actually heard that when I was stopped at a stoplight, and I'm in my car, and I'm thinking to myself, and so now, I but I heard this beat, And so what I heard was this riff. And so what I did is I turned on my phone and I recorded it. I went like do 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 ba do 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 ba like do 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 ba do 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 ba do 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 ba do 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 ba And so I recorded. I have hundreds of these recordings. Literally, I'll wake up in the middle of the night, and all of a sudden I'll have a riff like na da da da. And so and I'll record it. I'll just record it, and I'll come back to it a month later. I'm going to switch guitars now, and uh, I was using, I love, it's called the Parlor. This guitar is so thin and so little compared to a, quote, normal, unquote, acoustic guitar, and listen to how amazing it sounds. This is a, a Sawtooth Mini Jumbo, but when I can say, how do you stay focused, this is important. You stay focused by learning new things. For example, 
go to a new environment. You know, I have a nice house, you know, and, and nobody gave me anything. It's not like my people said, oh, Michael, you're so wonderful. We like want to give you stuff. You know how many, you know how much, I'm going to just say this. I get so many messages, so many emails of people want me to give them things. Michael, you have a lot of guitars. Can you, I, 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 I guitar is my life. I want one. And, and you know what? I actually did it one time. I did. And, and it was a guy, I'm going to, I'm going to call him out on this. His name was Ricky Reardon. And, and I felt really bad. He gave me this sob story. I sent him a USA guitar and he said he's living at a hotel. He's super sick. He's dying. And, and what happened was uh, I didn't hear from the guy. And he said, oh, you know, Mike, I'm a huge fan of yours. And he sent me, you know, recordings of his music. This is the mini jumble. This is really little, believe it or not, compared to a normal jumble. But again, I mean, listen to the low end. And so anyway, what this guy said, you know, I'm dying. I want a guitar. And, and, and me being the nice person I am, I did. So then I hadn't heard from him and I called up and, and I called the last number I had. It was a hotel. And I said, hey, how's Ricky doing? And, and the uh, really nice elderly lady on the phone, she goes, what do you mean? I said, well, well, is he still really sick? She goes, well, I just saw him five minutes ago because he lived at this hotel. And, and, and uh, you know, he's staying there for a while. And I don't know how long he lived there, but, you know, months. And, and I go, what do you mean? I said, I thought he was really sick. She goes, no, he just left with his girlfriend. He's fine. I went, and I went, Ugh. ah! And so I ended up getting a hold of him. And I said, dude, what are you doing? You scammed me out of a guitar, didn't you? And he's like, no. and And then he hung up on me, and I never heard from him again. And I don't know what this person's doing, but the point is this. I'm a nice person. I give a lot to you. You know, but, you know, people ask me for stuff all the time, but nobody ever said, you know, when my parents died or my younger sister died or, you know, I had three tours cancer. Go, hey, Michael, let's, you know, we want to do this stuff for you. I, I'm not asking for that. I want to help and I'm not hurting because I, money is not my focus anyway. I, I do, I do great. And uh, I want to genuinely help. But the point is this, that, you know, you've got at somewhere along the line in this COVID thing, you've got to just say, okay, we're in a very serious situation, you know, whether how you believe it, you know, politically or spiritually, anything or just globally. But what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do for yourself to make yourself better out of this? And that's what I've, I've strived to do. Now, let's read this. But when I stay focused on material, learn something new by changing your environment, using drum programs. There's so many things you can do to, to be uh, creative. Now, uh, I also want to talk about something. I'm doing a really serious shred collab. Now, I had to delete a couple posts on my Facebook page because people are just so rude when it comes to females. I mean, I can't believe it. It's like, dudes, let me give you a, a, a thing. Let me just give you a little help. Not that I'm some expert, but... You know, uh, I, 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 I know a lot about people. Don't, don't sit there and criticize another woman just because you think you're cool, you know, and, and, or, or that you think you're funny because humor is subjective online. It's not funny. And, and, and most of it isn't because you don't hear the, the emotion behind the words. There is a, a girl named Kate Devon. Now, I don't know Kate very well. She's only 19 years old. But she has been approaching me about a shred collab for a long time. She came to a clinic with her boyfriend, and it was in upstate New York, Big Apple Music, and, and I met her there. You know, we took a picture, and, you know, I, that's all I knew. And, and so, anyway, um, online, you know, I saw her on Instagram, and, you know, we just would, you know, just, uh, like, uh, how can you say it, like, uh, publicly, you know, just would exchange, hey, bro, you know, hey, do that, you know, blah, 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 cool, blah, you know, just the normal stuff, nothing, you know, nothing. And, and so anyway, she approached me about doing a shred collab, a shred collaboration. And, and uh, I said, Kate, I need a big name, okay? I'm, I'm a known guitarist. I'm a big name guitar player. I need a big name. She goes, well, how's Andy James? I go, I like Andy. <laughs> Andy's awesome! 
So I said, you have Andy James uh, doing a Shrek collab with you? She said, yes. So I contacted Andy. You know, we're not the best friends. You know, I mean, we like each other and, you know, we know each other. We met. Personally, I said, Andy, are you doing this Shred collab? He goes, yes. I go, cool. So then I asked one of my close friends. I thought, well, who would be really cool to add to this Shred collab? I came up with Vinnie Moore. I mean, just the sound melted. I mean, Vinny's amazing. And, and he's the nicest guy in the world. And, and, you know, he's a credit to the guitar community. So I asked Vinny, I said, Vinny, here's what we have. We've got Andy James, me, if you're interested, and this young female guitarist named Kate, who kind of put all this together. So anyway, we are doing a shred collab. I came up with the title called Unbroken. And... and you know, we were kind of going around titles, but you know when I meant Unbroken? It's about this time when when things really put massive pressure on you. When you're when you're like, you know, the weight of the world is on your shoulders and on your back. Don't break. Bend, but don't break. Unbroken. And so we are debuting the Shred Collab on my YouTube page Friday, July 17th at 1 p.m. Uh, New York time, 12 o'clock Chicago time, 10 a.m. L.A. time. Now, so, and I, I just want to say, Kate is cool, and, and, and I give her a lot of credit. So when you want to post about this, and you want to think, oh, well, this girl guitarist or this, you know, girls get a lot of, of flack, and they get a lot of private messages that guys would never get. And, and uh, maybe some, you know, if they're Brad Pitt. But uh, when you see this collab, it's amazing because... It's not an easy progression to play to. It's not a typical... Okay, we're rocking, wait! Oh yeah, hey, let's, let's make it weird. F sharp, oh that's weird, oh yeah, oh yeah. It's not like that at all. This has got some moving chords that's really cool. And Kate did her own interpretation of it. She kind of played in between us. And then Vinny hits this solo, and he's so emotive and so much emotion he plays with us. You know, just kind of finger-picking things and really cool intervals. And then Andy comes up, and he's, like, doing some wicked stuff. As You know, you, you know Andy's kind of a really cool player. He uses his, like, first and third. He doesn't use his fourth finger as much, but it takes away nothing from his brilliance. It's kind of like, like Leslie West's. You know, being able to play like, you know, super fast shred mode. I mean, he's really amazing. I love his guitar playing. I love his music. And so he plays next. And then I, and then Kate plays in between. And then I end up in the song. And all of us have a unique interpretation of, of this progression. The progression is really cool. So I'm very proud of it. So I hope you guys tune in. Now, I am playing what's called a sawtooth mini jumbo. And now um, I have a couple more questions here. Okay, this one was really cool. Um, okay, are you ready, Joey? I've been ready the whole time. Okay, okay. Do you use, okay, he's reading it here like me, two-way pick slanting, or is it just a natural flow how you hold your pick? Then he writes, you are the best guitarist and greatest guy on earth. Do you believe that, Joey? No, I'm the best, okay. Oh, no. Okay, so here's what I can tell you. Pick slanting is a net. You have to slant your pick one way or the other. Either when you face the headstock, you're going to slant it downward, or you're going to slant it upward. Now, here's a really bizarre thing. When I play right-handed... Sorry, I was looking at myself at the camera. I slant downward. I slant downward, but when I play left-handed, I slant upward. Either one of these is correct. Pick slanting. See, one of the things that a lot of people do is they overthink. Paralysis comes from analysis. So analysis equals paralysis. And so when you overanalyze something, you get paralyzed by the fear that you're not doing it correctly or that some minor nuance in your playing is not quite accurate. And so here's what I say. 
chill. Get speed kills on metalmethod.com. Go over the tremolo picking. Go over these exercises. I talk in detail, but if you, you need a, a, a little bit of slant, whether it's downward or upward, facing the headstock. And so when you do that, you're fine. If you play parallel to the strings or perpendicular, like, or, or perpendicular to the ground, where you're like literally like this, it's gonna be terrible. Because you're gonna find a lot of resistance with the pick that you won't find if you slant it. Now, okay, so that's that. And again, go to my YouTube channel. We've got so much content. Uh, from my metal method, like we show excerpts of my metal method instructional programs. Uh, it's really incredible. And there's so much content on there. Now we have one last question here. Um, Michael, that's me. Yes, okay, we're gonna both look into the camera. Hello, are you going to introduce a seven string sawtooth guitar? That's an excellent question, I'm glad you asked that. I didn't ask it, someone asked that online. Okay. Yes. See, a lot of my new record, a lot of the album in, in, in there, uh, called Intermenso, was produced on 7th Street. So when you go like that... low it's not there it's a low B go 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 but down an octave oh when I did I took a seven string guitar and tuned the seven string down a half a whole step to a flat now normally I tune down anyway so I'm down a half step so I tuned down a half step to start with, then the low B would actually be B flat, then I took that and tuned that down a whole step. So you have basically like what, what a lot of people would consider would be like a drop D tuning. Okay, I'm tuning it up right here. mean now picture that down literally a fourth so you're moving down to a low string I love seven strings seven strings are here to stay I was one of the first electric guitarists uh, besides George Van Epps to ever use seven strings I know Steve Vai says that you know he, you know he recorded it on white stake or something well that that might be true I mean I know it's true but um, I had it in in nitro so I, I did, but I didn't have a low B. I had a high A because I knew the low B had in, been invented by George Van Epps, a great uh, American guitar player of Dutch descent in the 1950s. So he was really the first one. I mean, decades before anybody, uh, any one of us did it. But what I did is I moved it to a high A. Then Steve Vai took it to the low B, and the low B is the one that stuck. And and I I can. Uh, uh, agree with that because that's what George Van Epps did that was original but I wanted to be different but when you hear it that low it just sounds amazing and I write a lot of music using altered tunings and, and things like this and what happens uh, with a seven string is they are here to stay eight strings like Tosin plays um, yeah I, they're always going to be around but I don't think that it's kind of like a symphony orchestra incorporating a five string violin or a six string violin they are there you know i don't know about the five strings but six strings are there for sure and, and uh but is it really necessary and so because i i truly feel that after the seventh string when you use eight strings like Meshuggah or all those bands where's the bass i mean i would hate to be a bass player in those bands because you are in their territory why, why are you in their territory? I mean, that's one of the rules of a symphony orchestra. 
you know, if you're an oboe, you have a certain amount of range. If you're a trumpet, uh, why, why would you want to write for multiple instruments in the same frequency because it starts to cloud things up and makes it m mushy. So it's the same, see my orchestral mind thinks that why use an A string unless you don't want bass? And that's what happens, you don't hear the bass on these records. So then they get big and all the people are like, oh, the string is really cool, man. Well, where's the bass? Well, we don't care about the bass, man, it's like, cool. Well, I care because I, I think that you're not gonna hear a Star Wars thing or you're not gonna hear the Avengers you know, using a symphony orchestra in the background and thinking like these people think. And so, but seven strings are great. So to answer that question, yes, I'm going to be uh, releasing and debuting a seven string sawtooth guitar later this year. Now, um, I'm gonna see if there's anything else here. Uh, oh yeah, somebody said Bucky Pizzarelli was using them back in the 40s, there you go. Uh, you know, so it's been around a long time. The high A was my idea. The low B is the one that stuck. But even just, you know. I mean, it just sounds so mean. I, I like, I had this song called East Side Story, and then I changed, uh, or I mean, I, I originally wanted to call it I Can't Take It No More, because we had a Nitro song. I can't take it no more. So, and, and Jim never liked me using titles that he came up with with my songs that weren't including him. So I called it East Side Story, like West Side Story, but. I went like... One, it's a really killer song that I wrote, and, and I've got I've got a hundred songs like that. Uh, but uh, if you get anything out of this lesson today, uh, with your questions answered, I really try just to focus. And I know I digress, and I talk about a lot of other things. But guitar is a life lesson. The things that you can learn from what I've talked about, I like to talk about my experiences because they're vast. Uh, you know, I've just seen so much of this world. Uh, and, and I tell people, you know, they say, well, you know, if there was one thing that you could sum up. Okay, wait. Okay, Michael, if there was one thing you could sum up about all your travels, please sum that up. That's an excellent question, Joey, and I'm glad that you asked that. From all my travels. Now, think about that you're a person that's gone to Mexico 30 times and you've never been to any of the vacation spots. I've never have. I go there to tour. See, when I go to and tour, I am in their world. And see, I don't go on, on tour like some egotistical rock star where we're like, I'm sheltered and I go to my beautiful five-star hotel. Oh yes, I stay in beautiful hotels. But I am with people from the country. So I like jump into the their world. I've been doing this for three decades. So when I go to England, I'm with British people. I, and yes, I stay at a nice hotel in beautiful places, but they know I love history. So we'll stay like, uh, I'll stay at beautiful uh, 100, 500 year old hotels. We'll go to restaurants that, that have Roman walls, literally from Roman era as part of the walls. Uh, I was at a, a place in England in the year 1275, they opened up. Now think about that. This is over 100 and 35 years old, or not 100, I'm sorry, 700. And so I was in a restaurant in Britain that, that was open since the year 1275. 
Now, this is before they had a police force. Now, here's a really great thing. You know, because people always, you know, now right now in America, you know, defund the police or whatever you think. Back in the day, 700 years ago, they didn't have a police force. They had a jail on the outside. So if people got too rowdy, the actual citizens took it upon themselves. Lock this dude up or lock this girl up. Lock him up. And so it was like a citizen's arrest. And then they realized, well, that's not working so good. Then they got the police force. But I can t this is like one of a thousand things that I've seen in my life. I mean, you don't know what it's like to stand one foot. We're talking literally a third of a meter in front of the center stone of Stonehenge blindfolded. I did it. It's powerful. It's so powerful to take the blindfold off and be in front of the center stone and see this humong, I mean, just massive stone enclave. And you're in the center of it. And there's 500 people going, wanker, where are we there? Because they wouldn't let anybody in. I had fans that came to see me that worked there. And so when I talk about guitar, when I talk about life, you don't have to agree with everything I said. Did I ever say agree with it? No, I'm just saying this is the world according to Michael. And my experience is vast. And I only do it for two reasons. Two, metal two. One, because everything I do is divisible by metal. One, to help you. Two, to help me. Because if I help you and give you the most concise, the best, the most accurate answer I can, it helps me. And I'm living proof. Anyway, I want to say... On behalf of Sawtooth Guitars, Chromacast Music Products, uh, Musical Products, they have so many things. And Go DPS Music, the retail chain. I'm Michelangelo Badio. See ya.